almost three years ago that the Tankside Cesium Removal System, or TISCR, was only a conceptual drawing. The idea quickly took shape. The start of tank waste treatment actually starts when TISCR operations begin. The TISCR complex will treat waste from tank AP-107. That waste will then be stockpiled in another AP farm tank until it can be sent directly to the waste treatment and the mobilization plant's low activity waste facility. There it will be immobilized into glass through the process known as vitrification. This is that first step. Um, this is the first waste that ultimately will be treated into from WTP um, and will be the stepping stone for all the future to come. The Tisker treats about five gallons a minute. Our goal is we'll have up to a million gallons pre-staged, ready to feed the plant. Treating waste on an industrial scale for the first time in the history of the site. AP-107 recirculation in Tisco has started. everyone. I'm John Eschenberg. I'm the president of Washington River Protection Solutions. We've got some very exciting news to announce today. After some three and a half years of planning, designing, engineering, constructing, fabricating, upgrading our site's infrastructure, today we're pleased to announce that we've initiated hot operations at the Tankside Cesium Removal Facility. It's a very landmark day for us. We're all very proud of this achievement. And for the first time, we can say that we began pre-treating and conditioning tank waste for the ultimate disposition by vitrification. The TISCR uses a set of industrially proven treatment te technologies, uh, filtration and ion exchange. The filtration component re removes uh, waste solids, and then secondly, the ion exchange columns remove cesium-137, which is our target radionuclide. And through those two processes, that's how we, we treat the waste. These processes are proven industry-wide and have been proven in similar circumstances at Oak Ridge, at Savannah River site, and during the Fukushima cleanup. So we've got a high level of confidence in these process technologies. Operations at the Tisker facility were initiated at 0100 hours on January 26th. And over the course of safe, steady, and stable operations, I'm pleased to announce that we've treated over, just over 50,000 gallons of waste in the last week. 50,000 gallons on our journey to treat 1 million gallons by the close of this calendar year. And it's a monumental step forward as we drive towards vitrifying some of the tank waste. So at this point, I'd like to introduce our, our, our senior federal official for the, the Hanford site, uh, Brian Vance. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm Brian Vance. I'm the manager of the Office of River Protection and the Richland Operations Office. And while tremendous progress has been safely delivered uh, here by our Hanford team since the environmental mission began, um, I'm pleased to announce that we started an important new chapter of our cleanup mission, the start of tank waste treatment. John and the Washington River Protection Solutions team, uh, working with the Department of Energy, our other site contractors, and our regulators have done a tremendous job in delivering this important milestone for our site, especially given the additional challenges we've faced together over the last two years. This important achievement for Hanford and many other achievements safely delivered daily with far less attention are the result of the hard work of our entire one Hanford team, the Department of Energy, our contractor partners, our subcontractor partners, and roughly 10,000 dedicated professionals working every day to progress this important mission to ensure that the, while ensuring the safety of the workers in the workplace, our community, and the Pacific Northwest. While today we recognize the tank waste treatment mission beginning with the start of tank site seizure removal system operations. It's also important to recognize that there's important progress being made every day at the waste treatment and, immob and immobilization plant um, and several other projects across the site that combined will deliver tank waste treatment through our direct feed low activity waste program 
by the end of next calendar year. Finally, I'd be remiss not to recognize the outstanding support we receive from our Tri-Cities community, um, our leaders and our local businesses, small businesses, and certainly Senator Murray, Senator Cantwell, and Congressman Newhouse. Thanks again for being here today for this important announcement, this important event, and I'm pleased to share uh, several recorded messages from some of our most important supporters. It's from the other Washington. I hope to see Tisker operations in person this spring. As a program, EM is leveraging years of successful work to launch a new era of our important cleanup mission. Nowhere is this more evident than at Hanford. Tisker is a cornerstone of the DF Law program and it enables us to initiate safe and effective tank waste treatment at Hanford. It's a capability that will transform the Hanford site and benefit the entirety of the EM program. The importance of this achievement can't be overstated. Congratulations to Brian, John, and the entire One Hanford team on getting 2022 off to a great start by achieving one of the top priorities of the entire EM program. I'm optimistic about what you'll achieve this year as we work toward around-the-clock operations to treat tank waste. As we build on this momentum, I thank you for your dedication and congratulate you on your success in tackling one of the most difficult environmental challenges in this country. Good morning, Governor Jay Inslee here. And I want to say I am thrilled to celebrate this big step forward for the Hanford cleanup. You know, for decades, millions of gallons of dangerous waste have threatened the Columbia River and the health of everyone in Central Washington. And certifying the tank side cesium removal system is a major leap towards making our community safer. This is a win for the entire Tri-Cities community, which has worked so hard to make this day possible, but also for the entire state. I especially want to congratulate the Washington State Department of Ecology, which participated in every step of getting the system operational. So here's to the successful startup for this facility and more success in the months ahead. This is yet another testament to the brilliant people in the Tri-Cities community who are putting their intellectual capital to work and their physical work as well. So thanks to everyone. Let's get to work. This is truly an exciting time for the Tisker team, the Hanford site, the community, state, and country. As a lifelong Central Washingtonian, I know how proud each and every one of us are for the pivotal role our community played to help bring an end to World War II and the Cold War. But as I've always said, it's imperative to not forget the federal government's obligation and responsibility to clean up the legacy of those efforts. I've been a strong advocate for Hanford over the years ensuring that Hanford has the resources and oversight required to continue cleanup progress through my work on the House Nuclear Cleanup Caucus, as well as on the Appropriations Committee. Today's announcement marks a big step toward achieving our cleanup goals, and I am proud that the Tri-Cities community continues to set a good example of responsible management through sound policy execution. I look forward to seeing more progress this year as we approach the start of vitrification. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate this monumental step in the decades long effort to clean up our Hanford site. Today, for the first time, the tank side cesium removal system is allowing us to treat tank waste on a large scale in preparation for vitrification. Getting this system online is an engineering feat. It puts us one step closer to safely treating and disposing of approximately 90% of the 56 million gallons of tank waste stored at the Hanford site. As a consistent supporter of Hanford cleanup and holding every administration accountable for dollars for cleanup, I want to thank the Hanford workers, the Tri-Cities community, the Department of Energy, and everyone for their tireless work. I'm committed to continuing to work with you to move us forward and continuing the mission here on cleanup and turning our community moving forward. Hi, this is Senator Patty Murray, and I'd like to congratulate the Department of Energy for its startup of the tank side cesium removal system. This is a huge milestone for the cleanup mission at the Hanford site, as it takes a massive step towards treating and vitrifying tank waste. You know, as a longtime champion of the Hanford community in the Senate, I know how important Tisker is towards protecting our environment, 
upholding our shared commitments and even bolder action in the future. So I'm very glad to see the Office of River Protection and Richland Office teams make strides towards accomplishing this. Getting Tisker to where it is today required tremendous effort and dedication amid extremely challenging circumstances. So I just want to thank all of you for your really hard work in getting this done. Thank you. All right, we'd like to thank each of those recorded messages. Uh, very powerful. Thank you for your continued support and your endorsement of our continued successes. So at this time, we'd like to take your questions. Uh, Destry, over to you. Appreciate it, John, Brian. Uh, members of the media who are joining us, a reminder to go ahead and ask your questions using the Q&A feature in Teams. We have a few questions already. First comes from Nick from the Associated Press. What is the cost of this new system? Oh, yeah, I'm happy to answer that question. Um, well, first I'll state, uh, for, the, for the record, this, this project um, was delivered under cost and under schedule, ahead of schedule, which is um, really important uh, achievement for the site given the conditions we've faced together over the last two years. The cost for the project overall was about $130 million, which included the Tisker unit itself and includes all the tank farm upgrades to support the operations that we've undertaken over the last two weeks. Next question comes from Anna King from the Northwest News Network. Where will the filtered cesium go? Where will they store it or dispose of it? So the, 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 the spent ion exchange columns will be stored adjacent to the Tisker complex. So in total, we anticipate making up to 150 canisters. So we've made a, a large, uh, robust concrete storage pad, and that's, that's the resting place for, for the on-exchange columns. Next question comes from Wayne Barber, Weapons Complex Monitor. Does Tisker mean that Hanford will not have to build the suspended pretreatment facility? I'll take that one, John. The, the pretreatment facility was intended to create, when the, the full site was operating, a, a distribution from the, between the low activity waste fraction of the tank waste and the high level waste fraction of the tank waste. Um, in 2012, when we shifted our focus to uh, direct feed low activity waste approach, um, the tank site's easy removal system was a proven technology uh, which represented a, a low risk approach to be able to start the tank waste treatment mission um, on the schedule we had established um, through the consent decree with the state of Washington. Um, the pretreatment facility will still be considered um, within the context of the high level waste mission, the broader mission of the site. Um, we're still in negotiations with the state of Washington now on the future of the high level waste uh, way ahead. And so it, at this point, it's premature to say the pretreatment facility um, won't be used. That's really to be determined at a later time. The okay, next question comes from George from the Energy Daily. How much waste will be treated through Tisker over what period of time? And where will the treated waste be stored pending vitrification? Thanks, Destry. Our initial campaign is for one million gallons. Um, it's, uh, we've got the waste to be treated. It's staged and, and being treated actively now. Once treated, it'll be stored in the closest tank farm to the waste treatment and the mobilization plant. It's called the AP farm in, in our jargon. And again, as we, as we treat the waste um, through filtration and ion exchange, those used columns will be stored adjacent to the Tisker complex. Follow-up question now from Anna King, Northwest News Network. Will the storage facility, John, that you were just talking about, for the canisters be the ultimate disposal of the IXEs? So it's, it's a great question. And, and the ultimate dis disposition of the used ion exchange columns has not yet been decided. There are, there are three alternatives under consideration. Uh, one is, is storage. Second is off-site disposition. And then thirdly, it would be the reintroduction of the materials and then ultimately vitrified. Those are the three uh, potential disposition pathways at this point. Next question, Kelsey Shank from The Edge. How many years do you anticipate Tisker will operate for? It's, uh, it, the Tisker is designed 
for a, a service life of just over five years. Uh, we believe that uh, given how robustly it's designed, we believe that it will be serviceable and operable for a period of time beyond that. Uh, we're very encouraged by our initial operations run. We will continue to learn many, many things over the course of this first campaign. At the conclusion of the, the campaign, uh, we'll consider al other alternatives, but right now the Tisker facility, as it sets, is, is designed with a serviceable life at, at about five years. Another follow-up from Wayne Barber. Tisker is a demonstration project. Could more Tisker facilities be built at Hanford? I'll, I'll be happy to take that one. So, so as, as mentioned, as you rightly point out, it's a, um, a demonstration project. We'll use the first years of operations to determine um, the viability of the system itself, uh, look at opportunities where something similar could be approved um, or, or built and, and fielded with similar or, or additional capabilities if we think that's appropriate. But at this point, I think, you know, we, we see this as a great project to get started on, learn from, develop a way ahead that we think is affordable and achievable. And, and we're leaving a lot open at this point because it is a demonstration project, but it creates some opportunities for us in the future um, in, a, in, a, in a number of different ways that we think are very positive. Another follow-up from Anna King. How much will it cost to run Tisker for five years? So the, the operations cost over a, a period of time, it's, it's approximately $1 million per ion exchange column. So, you know, we think we will make up to 150 uh, columns, so that's $150 million plus operating costs. So I, I would say just a rough order of magnitude, we would be in the order of um, 175 to 200 million dollars in, in overall treatment cost. Another follow-up from George with the Energy Daily. How many Tisker units will be used and will they continue operating after the VIT plant starts up? Well, I, I, at, this, at this point, it's a, it's a great question. Um, right now, again, this is a demonstration project. It's a one-of-a-kind for the Hanford site. We'll make determinations over the first couple of years what our options are for additional treatment capabilities and whether that's more Tiskers or some other capability. I think that's still yet to be determined. Um, we're, but again, we're very encouraged uh, by the time it took to take this unit from design to testing to fielding the operations. And so we see this as a success model um, that we could leverage at other, in other locations on the site as the tank waste mission continues. No more questions from the, from the media. Before we wrap up, though, John and Brian, I'd like to give you a couple of minutes each to uh, share any closing remarks. John? Thank you, Destry. So I, I, I just uh, got to say that I'm very, very pleased that uh, Washington River Protection Solutions has, has been entrusted with this critical part of the mission by, by our customer. I'd like to just start by thanking our entire team uh, who worked tirelessly, and as Brian pointed out, uh, oh, by the way, through a national pandemic. Uh, we had a suite of great subcontractors that delivered. Uh, they worked uh, wind, sleet, snow, sunshine. Uh, our support by the regulatory community, uh, our, our support by our friends at, at the, uh, in the unions and, and, and labor, and the community. And it's really been a collective effort and it's really proven what's in the art of the possible when we come together in partnership, all entities, and make such an important delivery for the Department of Energy. Brian? Thank you, John. Um, yeah, to, to echo John's sentiment, I, there's, there's many, many people to thank, um, both past and present, who have put us in a position to start a new chapter uh, in the Hanford cleanup um, mission. I would say as we continue to work together, the teamwork between the department, um, Washington River Protection Solutions, the other Hanford contractors um, has really been phenomenal, especially in a period of, of very you know, trying times and dynamic change. The ability to work together in these types of circumstances um, with most of the field work being conducted during the pandemic for Tisker and, and other projects across the site is really a phenomenal testament to our, our team and that's not possible without the great support we receive from our community, um, our congressional members, and our state as well. So 
Um, I look forward with a lot of optimism for what we'll be able to accomplish together in the coming weeks, months, and years. And uh, this is an important new chapter, um, but it's really a testament to the team and the, the sense of purpose that I think uh, that the 10,000 employees of the site bring to their, their work every single day. And my optimism largely stems from what we have been able to accomplish and what I know we can accomplish in the future together um, by working together as a team. Well, I kind of expected this would happen as you were wrapping up. A couple of more questions came in. One, one from Wayne at uh, Weapons Complex. Can you talk more about the role of the subcontractors in building Tisker? I, I, I'll be happy to. So we, we have relied on uh, a, a subcontractor uh, sited in Columbia, South Carolina to do the initial design and uh, fabrication of the Tisker unit. Um, that, that was shipped across country. Uh, they, they have a, a local shop here, which they do some servicing for us and consulting. We also relied on a number of uh, local businesses, both large and small, to help us throughout the, uh, throughout the construction phase. Everything from the concrete supplier to the, the masons, the people that put up the fence around uh, the Tisker complex, uh, a lot of underground utilities and infrastructure upgrades, as Brian mentioned earlier. So all have relied on subcontracted expertise to our com to our company, and uh, couldn't be more pleased with the performance of the overall team because they really had risen to the challenge. One more from George from the Energy Daily. How long did the um, did the ticker units operate at Savannah River, and what did you learn about the operations there? So I, the, 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 tisker, the ticker units, which is a jargon here, but that, that's tank closure cesium removal uh, facility uh, at Savannah River site. Uh, they started design in 2016, and I, I believe it was not actually put into service until the 2019 timeframe. There was a host of things that, uh, that that team learned, and I'm proud to say that uh, our team absolutely capitalized on all of those lessons learned from the Tisker, the Ticker facility and incorporated that into the, the design of the, the Tisker facility here. So it's, uh, it's part of uh, leveraging uh, industry expertise, uh, the lessons learned by others. And I'm proud to say that uh, the Tisker unit is uh, a little bit better than the Ticker unit. Uh, always some, some healthy competition between the sites here. But uh, key lessons learned coming out of the ticker that we applied, wanted to make sure that we controlled the pace of engineering uh, in addition to how we licensed it for operation and, and, how, and as we pushed through the final stages of, of our technology development. So modulating the speed of those three principal uh, activities was critical to us and we did learn some things from the ticker unit there. Okay, our last question for the morning comes from Anna King. How has COVID, supply chain issues, and inflation made work difficult constructing these projects and at the waste treatment plant in general? Well, I, 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 you know, every one of our projects and act operations has been impacted by COVID in one or more ways. Um, one of the things that I think I'm, I'm most pleased with uh, is that the, the, the working together with the contractors, contractors working with labor, to identify opportunities for us to um, embrace the CDC guidelines, create a safe workplace for our workforce. And we've had roughly 6,000 people reporting to our work location since the end of September of 2020. And, and then finding ways within the challenges that the COVID represents to, um, to win, to overcome uh, the obstacles of, of staffing at times, of supply chain at times, Re stretching our time horizon and, and, and really trying to identify those opportunities, those risks, and those opportunities to mitigate those risks, not only as individual um, companies, but also as, as members of the Hanford team. The companies have worked together, uh, shared experiences, shared materials at times, shared practices, and found ways to work together to, to, to largely overcome the challenges that COVID has represented. And I think the progress we've been able to demonstrate throughout this time has been remarkable. Um, I don't think we're out of the challenges we're facing. We are seeing some areas of supply chain weakness 
across the site in different different projects in different areas. But I'm, I'm confident that the, the contractors are going to be resilient, continue to find ways to mitigate those risks, and continue to deliver taxpayer value as they always do. Brian, John, thank you for your time this morning. Members of the media, thank you for thank you for joining us. Remember, there is a website available. There is the URL there on your screen. Rely on this website for information to support your story development today. We have pictures. We have video. Soon we will post the recording of this press conference to that website. Also, Paul Noel, Joan Lucas, their email addresses are there. Go ahead and ask them questions uh, should you need support throughout the day. Again, uh, sure appreciate your time on this uh, major announcement.